Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. A lot has changed since the last episode. We've basically moved completely out of the old office into the new one, and my wife and son have already left South Africa are in, are in the United States. So I'm flying solo here with the two older boys until we can move a little later on, probably in the first week of November is what it's looking at like right now. So thank you for working with us while our dust settles. I don't think this is where we're gonna be filming, but right now I'm on my couch in my house. So we're gonna figure this out as, as we have life goes on. Anyways, before we get into today's hot news, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is actually brought to you by Hostinger. If you're looking to host things on the internet, whether that be a website, a merch shop, a video game server, or even just cloud-based storage, Hostinger is the place that you should go to check it out. In fact, they have so many different hosting options that they have a dedicated Minecraft server hosting, which you can totally do to rock them retrace Minecraft servers that you want to throw up. Hostinger has fast load times, 24 seven customer support, and easy navigation that allows you to bring internet to everybody, video games to everybody, your virtual private server, done. So whatever your hosting needs are, if you go to hostinger.com forward slash UFD tech, you can save up to 91% off a yearly subscription with them. That's 91% off by using our link in the video description. Whether it's web hosting, VPS hosting, cloud hosting, Minecraft server hosting, check out Hostinger for it. Okay, with that being said, I also want to start off hot news with selling you something which is apparently the Nintendo Switch, the brand new one with the increased battery life thanks to the new chip design that uh, Nintendo has put in. You can get $24 off on Amazon right now to bring the entire cost of the console to around $275, which is quite good. So if you wanna do that, you can click the link in the video description, our Amazon affiliate code. You can get it for 275. All you have to do is click the little coupon to apply the savings. So in case you wanted to switch, now might be a good time to buy it, especially with the refresh. But let's talk about the main point of today's hot news, which is the title and the thumbnail and everything, is that no, they everybody said that this couldn't happen, which is Intel, and everybody else in the world can run ray tracing, okay? It's, a, it's here now, thanks to Intel and World of Tanks, which is great. Uh, more specifically, their publisher, War Gaming, has brought ray tracing to any graphics card that supports DirectX 11, not DirectX 12 and not DXR, which has been the main implementation of ray tracing over these past few months and the specific one that NVIDIA typically uses with its RTX cards. This implementation is slightly different. Wargaming partnered up with Intel to make sure that the CPU could allow it to process how the rays intersect with the polygons by making it boxes and it was a whole complicated thing and if you want to watch their explanation of it which is a little bit more technical you can watch the video that's right there up in the top right hand corner but basically any graphics card can now run ray tracing in world of tanks however the ray tracing in this implementation currently is only for shadows they're doing it to bring more realistic shadows to the game for whatever reason, which I guess slow moving tank battles, nice shadows are going to be gorgeous. It seems like the ray tracing is gonna be only used on the tank models and not the entire scene that you're playing in the game, but the main uh, desire behind implementing this ray tracing is to make the shadows look better, but also to make sure that they're still playing above 60 FPS. And looking at some people's reports of this, it's kind of true with an RX 5700, I saw that they were getting between 70 and 80 FPS with ray tracing shadows on the maximum setting. And without ray tracing shadows, they were getting 190 FPS. So it's a pretty big performance hit to go from nothing to everything. And based on an anecdotal evidence that I've seen in comments about this, it's not necessarily worth it because they can hardly tell the difference between whether it's on or off. However, the main thing to take away from this is that the implementation is there for a whole range of different graphics cards. It allows the technology to move forward and could potentially show us what's going to be available on next generation consoles, or we're gonna talk about it in a bit, AMD's ray tracing that should be coming out sometime soon. But Intel Wargaming bringing out ray tracing to DX11 graphics cards in case you freaking want to do that and cost all of your FPS. You can try it out. They have a downloadable demo that you can click the link in the video description to go find. But then let's talk about some more Intel news. 
it was previously reported late last week that Intel wouldn't be having 10 nanometer chips on the desktop and that there's an updated roadmap showing and indicating that they are just giving up completely. They're gonna have 14 nanometers all the way until 2022 with I believe it was Rocket Lake and then Meteor Lake starting in 2022 is going to be based on Intel 7 nanometer. However, it does look like that they clarified this statement. Intel came out in response to this saying that they're still gonna have 10 nanometers on desktop. So you guys just need to shut up. Whether or not that's true, whether or not it's Intel just saying that so that they could hold their shareholders and keep them happy and make them feel safe and sound. We don't know. It could be true. It could not be true. Obviously, take it with a grain of salt, whatever you hear on the internet about Intel scrapping 10 nanometers for desktop. But then let's get back into more ray tracing news. NVIDIA has announced that they are going to be working on remastering a lot more games with RTX, just like they did with Quake 2 RTX. Technically, NVIDIA didn't start that. It was a side project, and then they came in and helped everything. But their Lightspeed Studios will allow them to remaster a whole bunch of older games in the new RTX format. So be on the lookout for whenever NVIDIA starts dropping those. And then AMD's attempt at ray tracing, apparently, at least according to uh, internet speculation, should be coming out in this coming December. So AMD has promised that new Radeon software features should come out this December. And if you remember back when AMD announced the Navi cards, they also brought out Radeon image sharpening and they unveiled a whole new set of features that came out with their cards. Well, apparently they're gonna be implementing some more features and the indication given on what other people People have heard from AMD is that this is going to be ray tracing support for Navi using Microsoft's DXR. So you could potentially play a lot of the games that have been RTX exclusive so far with your Navi graphics card. But given the fact that just with ray tracing shadows on World of Tanks, 100 FPS uh, hit on your gameplay, I'm not necessarily sure this implementation implementation is going to make sense and it actually might just help Nvidia prove that dedicated ray tracing hardware is necessary to make everything work. It actually might backfire for AMD to implement this right now without ray tracing hardware unless they're going to announce that with the features. We'll find out. But in case you didn't know about how well AMD's graphics cards are selling. There's new indications from the Toll Corporation, which is the people who are behind PowerColor, saying that their revenue is up 103%. And one of the reasons this is a big deal is because PowerColor is an AMD exclusive AIB partner. They do not sell NVIDIA cards. So if their revenue is up 103%, it's a pretty good indication of how AMD graphics cards are selling. And it does seem like Navi is a hit in the industry and we'll see if that can continue with their new RX 5500 that's supposed to be coming out as well as the RX 5300 that's been rumored it's a possibility and then there's been in information coming out about ASRock's AMD B550 AM gaming motherboard. There's been some reports that this is actually the first leaked image and setup of a B550 motherboard, but it turns out the B550A is just an OEM replacement for the B450. So the B550 is gonna be separate from the B550A, which is just B450, but updated for OEMs who need a new model number every year to make them happy. So that's what that is. But then and there's also indication that there's a previously not announced CPU coming out from AMD, the Ryzen 7 3750X, coming between the 3700X and the 3800X, which makes no sense at all, none, because they're so close in performance and clock speed that I don't understand it. And either this is an OEM exclusive or it's to help AMD with margins because it's good enough. It's not good enough to be a 3800X, but it's better than the 3700X. So if they slap the price in the middle, there's no performance differentiation, but they can get a price differentiation. That might be what AMD is doing here. It don't make no sense. Why you do this? But speaking of AMD CPUs, there's new indications of Threadripper chips coming out. Ashes of the Singularity, there's a benchmark indicating that there's the new Threadripper 39 960X, which is going to be a 24 core chip in the start of the Threadripper lineup. On top of that, there's indication that there's going to be all the way up to a 3990X, a 3960X, 3970X, and a 3990X. No mention of a 3980X, but it's possible that the 3990X could go all the way up to 64 cores. However, if there's no 3980X, my guess is that it would actually be a 48 core chip just to be slightly better than Threadripper. 
the second generation, but not as good as the Epic uh, CPUs that are out there, or it could potentially definitely be a 64 core chip. Apparently, at least according to the rumors coming out from video cards, this is gonna be unveiled on November 5th, so just in under three weeks, with the launch of everything below the 3990X coming out on November 19th, whereas the highest end 3990X will come out in January 2020. And then one more AMD little bit of news, and that is apparently there's a new picture of the first RX 5500 picture, and it's gonna be the XFX Thick 2, which looks like they didn't change the design at all after Gamers Nexus lambasted them for how crappy the design was. They're just going to put it on a lower end card and hope it doesn't die. But on NVIDIA's side, the GTX 1660 Super is getting a bit more uh, sneak peeks with MSI's Gaming X and Ventus being pictured. Previously, it was just the Zotac that confirmed the 1660 Super's existence. Well, now MSI is also dropping a few things. And then finally, in case you feel bad for not having a PCI Express 4.0 motherboard yet with the X570 chipset, well, you should feel even worse because it looks like the PCI Express 6.0 is gonna be certified in 2021, or at least the specification is gonna be finalized, looking to be up to one terabit per second on a full 16X lane, which is insane. It's one terabit per second. That's 128 gigabytes per direction, upstream and downstream. That's insane on the freaking card slot. Anyways, this is probably not gonna be rolled out to consumers for quite some time, but PCI Express 5.0 is already finalized and could be rolled out to consumers sometime soon. But it just goes to show you that the technology is moving faster than we are, and I'm moving so fast that I'm gonna end hot news here and be done. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And don't forget that today's video is brought to you by Hostinger. Go to hostinger.com forward slash UFD tech for all of your hosting needs and get up to 91% off your yearly web hosting. Succeed faster, my friends. Do it. And that's going to be it. I'm going to wrap it up there. In case you want to support us here at UFD Tech, you can consider uh, checking us out on Patreon directly down below. You can consider signing up over on Floatplane or potentially even better, you can buy our fresh new merch. Okay? Check it out. The link in the video description. Anyways, I'm Brett. You've been hot news. Bye. What's that noise? Who's playing music? <laughs>